Hey everybody, it's Kurt Thompson here and I'm doing a trumpet lesson with the five levels of trumpet lip flexibility, lip slurs, and lip trills. We're leaving out the glissando today. So pretty much lip slurs and lip trills and we're doing five levels. What are the levels? The very beginner. You're a fourth grader, you're a fifth grader, or you're a 35 year old adult who just always wanted to play trumpet. Now's your chance. So the first level is very beginner. The second level would be intermediate. The third level will be advanced. The fourth level would be advanced and pro players specifically leaning towards the commercial and jazz pro players like your lead trumpeters, although there are some symphonic trumpeters that specialize in piccolo that probably might be in this camp. And then the fifth and final level is your insane level of high note artists like Bud Brisboy, John Fattis, and um, I like to see that I'm trying to make a little progress myself in that level. So anyway, let's get to it. The five levels of trumpet flexibility. I like to start my beginners in the Lao Little Book. Pure beginners. And the reason is it's just an easy way to do some very light push-ups. That's what I consider this. Just easy going push-ups. And I change it up a little bit compared to Lao Little. I add in some different rest. But let's look at number six. Number six is a perfect one because it allows the student to drop into the note and most can many will have a struggle trying to get back up and that's okay if the, if it really is a struggle then i'll go back to the previous page and allow a little amish or builder book and we'll do the one where you just drop so number six let's take a look at it All right, so I modify number six for pure beginners just based on different factors I already alluded to. And throughout this tutorial today on the five levels of lip flexibilities for trumpet, I'm not gonna really do a full-blown in-depth trumpet lesson because that would probably turn this into an hour or an hour and a half. And you know that I can actually speak for a good hour and a half, right? I can just ramble on. I'm gonna try to, um, splice this up, edit it, try to make it succinct so you can get through it in a decent amount of time. That said, I'm not going to go through every single exercise you're probably looking at right now. I'm going to supply the entire study of what we're doing, but I'm not going to go through all of them. And you can pause the video when we're done and go back and try to go through all of them yourself. It would take a lot of time for me to do that. I'm just giving you some examples here uh, for each level as we climb higher and higher into the more advanced levels. So that's Lao a little. Now you noticed after the after the fermata, I put a rest and you saw me do this. Because in my experience of working with many, many beginners, in fact, it's been said and I've agreed with it that my specialty is taking a pure beginner. I mean a pure beginner, someone who's never been in band, someone who's never played an instrument, someone who doesn't know what a whole note is, someone who's never buzzed their lips, that actually is my specialty. And I haven't been teaching a lot of beginners lately because so many advanced players and intermediates come to me for my upper register course, but that is my specialty. So the other specialty I have is of course teaching the very advanced brass players, people that even have many more suffixes after their last name than myself. So there's my two specialties, but here I think that we need to put a small break in between each of these measures you see in number six. So, and I also don't get too serious about the piano to MF crescendo. So we're not gonna worry about that. We're, we're not trying to overload the fourth grader or the fifth grader or the beginning adult, adult student with a lot of information. I just want them to do this and relax and not think too much just to kind of get in the groove. So if you are a teacher, 
or a student, and you're, let's just talk to the teachers. If you're a trumpet teacher and you got beginning students, this would be a perfect book for you to get if you don't already have it and have your beginner trumpet students working out of this at the very beginning of the book, Lowell Little Embouchure Builder Book. If you're a beginner trumpet player and you're watching this video and you don't have this book, go ahead and jump right over to Amazon. If I can find a link for it, um, one of my affiliate links, I'll throw it in there. You can just click on it and that way you can help support this channel. If I don't find it, I'll try to throw some other link in there that will help you. So you need to get the Lau Little Amisher Builder book for trumpet and cornet. It's a big red book with white lettering. That was number six and that's the first level of trumpet slurs and lip flexibilities. Now we're going to move on into my favorite book for lip flexibilities. Now I have a lot of books that I do like, like the Lau Little Amisher Builder book, a great book, especially for beginners and intermediates. Uh, but my favorite of all, and well, there's also the Colonel Earl Irons book, which I really like quite a bit. There's the Max Schlossberg, which is good. Uh, but the Charles Colon Advanced Lip Flexibilities for Trumpet is my favorite. It really is. It's the book that I messed around with when I had no instructor helping me out with how to play higher when I was 16. And I was able to build my range up um, over that school year for about a minor third from a D, high D to an F. So you're looking at lip trilling to E in the Charles Colon Advanced Lip Flexibilities for Trumpet. Lip trilling to E starts off at the high point in open position, no valves down, and you work your way through the seven positions all the way down to one, two, three, which engages all the tubing of the B flat trumpet. I actually have my students, when they work with me, do the opposite. I believe you should start lower and work higher. I feel it's a better way for everybody, myself included, all the way down to beginners and everybody in between, if you start off lightly and work your way to something harder um, that will put you under more stress, a more load, a bigger load. And I do the same thing when I exercise. I mean, when I, if I'm gonna do some pull-ups, let's say I'm gonna do 10 or 15 chin-ups or pull-ups, I'll actually take some 10 pound dumbbells and I'll just do a couple of these, just a couple of easy sets, very, very light because I want to warm things up. And so I do the same thing. That's my approach also with brass playing. But for today, we're going to go ahead and do it like Dr. Colin has here. We're going to start off in open position. Now, lip trills and lip slurs are different. The lip trilling is quite a lot faster. It really is <laughs> than lip slurring. In fact, when you go fast enough, you, it actually becomes its own technique. You you feel like you're, uh, it's like, it's like a, a regular locomotive train and then those high speed trains that float on magnets, there's just a difference there. And that's kind of what's going on here with this um, second technique of lip flexibility, the lip troll. So I'm not gonna go too fast to kind of blow you away and you don't know what I just did. We're gonna go, we're gonna put some speed behind it and, uh, but not too fast. This is, I'm gonna try to go to about the speed that maybe somebody in um, eighth grade might go, ninth grade, 10th grade, uh, maybe a comeback player who's 72 years old and starting my comeback player course or my upper register course or something like that or just taking some lessons and we're going to go at just a decent level we're not going to try to really impress anybody with this we're just going to take it nice and easy so here is lip trilling to e and we're just going to do the first position maybe it might do the next one again as i mentioned we don't have time to go through every single um, exercise in each study of these so this is level two of the five levels of lip flexibility for trumpet Okay, so that was a decent demonstration of lip trilling. It, I had it kind of slow enough to work. It could also be called a fast or a sped up lip slur, but I wanted you to be able just to hear and see what's going on and not be flustered by having it go so fast. The seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, lip trilling to E would be perfect for you to start working on um, as a budding trumpet player. Also, comeback players that have, haven't played for an 
I don't know, 20, 30 years, 50 years? Yes, Liptron D would be a perfect one for you. So this is the second level, level number two in the five levels of trumpet flexibility. All right, this is going to be level number three in the five levels of trumpet lip flexibility, lip trills, lip slurs. And it's out of my favorite book that we're talking about. Um, it's Lip Trilling to High C in the Char Dr. Charles Cullen Advanced Lip Flexibilities for Trumpet. Lip Trilling to High C. Now this is where for many of you, especially if you're not beginner, not intermediate, but you're kind of in that advanced range, uh, could be your symph symphonic players right now. I mean, uh, in Chicago Symphony, for example, the New York uh, the LA Philharmonic, uh, these kind of guys would probably be right around here, maybe a little higher, maybe. As I mentioned, if you specialize in piccolo, yeah, you're going to be higher. So lip trilling to high C presents quite a lot of challenges. You'll notice it is longer than the lip trilling to E. Obviously, we're higher. We're at the um, top of the staff and beyond. We're actually trilling up into the high C. I will add some speed for this one. Just assuming that those of you who are going to take a look at this and try to do it, you're, you are going to be able to go faster. So we will try to make this an honest to goodness lip trill. So this is the third level in the five levels of trumpet lip flexibility. That was very regimented. You could use a metronome with it. Now, once you get used to this level and you're just trying to spread your wings, a lot of times I freeform it. And I'll just, um, I'll lip trill, just kind of go on a feel. And um, I may speed it up, I may slow it down. Um, sometimes I might take a small little like quarter rest break in there, or whatever. I'll show you what I mean. And you can do this too after you get used to the advanced level here. So sometimes I'll speed it up, I'll play around, I'll rush right over and burn past those fermatas. It's up to you after you gain some facility here. Now the next one that you're going to take a look at is Lip Trilling to A above high C. It's actually in the third volume of the book, the Dr. Charles Colon Advanced Lip Flexibilities for Trumpet. It's the very last one. I want you to take notice of the format for volume three. I like that much better. If you look carefully, Dr. Charles Colon has everybody start in seventh position first, and then you work your way up to the highest part in each exercise or each study. I like that better. In fact, I already explained that that's how I have my students, even the beginners, do it. So this is the the last study at the very back of the book. And in the level system, this is the fourth level now. This would be advanced to pro, advanced to professional players with somewhat of a specialty in either high piccolo trumpet playing, if you're a symphonic classical player, um, commercial player, lead trumpet player. There could be some jazz trumpet players that might also be up in here, but more often than not, it's going to be your commercial player, your lead trumpet player who plays in a rock group, does recording sessions. Uh, you know what I'm trying to say, big band stuff, the kind of powerhouse player, you're going to be right at this level here. In fact, if I went around to, let's say, the Woody Herman reunion band, I think they have a, a tribute band, that lead player there would certainly get a challenge if you just showed up and had him play the highest one um, in open position. The Count Basie Orchestra, yes. The lead trumpet player there would also get a challenge. Let's go to the Airmen of Known. Um, or the Navy Commodores, or the Army Blues, the lead trumpet player, those groups would also have a challenge. For time's sake, I'm actually going to skip one, two, and three, one, and three. I'm going to skip all those and go all the way up to the very highest one, the very last one, in open position. But like I mentioned before, I'm leaving the entire study up where you can simply pause the video 
you can challenge yourself and try to go through all of them starting the way you should, which would be in seventh position, working your way up. So here we go. We're going to do the very last one in open position, which ends up taking you up to double A above high C. Obviously, that was the very last one in the Dr. Charles Colon Advanced Lip Flexibilities for Trumpet. If you can actually do that one, uh, like I just did, I want to shake your hand because that means you're, you're way above the pack for most, not only just trumpet players in general, but the best trumpet players that you can think of. You're already ahead of them as far as this goes. So good job. Now, if you crashed and burned and couldn't get this one, then this is a challenge for you. You should be loving this. This is a challenge. You need to go back to the level that you actually are on and work that level. But every now and then, do the challenge. All right, for those of you crazy enough to want to take a bite out of the apple of the last level, the fifth level, the insane level, the Bud Brisboy level, this is the extreme upper register. This is the insane level and in your lip trilling notes above the double A that we just did in level four. If you're looking at the study from level four and we, you know, we just finished up the lip trill that goes to double A, you'll see there's nothing else there. And so what you have to do is you have to mentally continue up. You're going to have to do it mentally unless you wanted to write it out yourself in finale or new score or something like that. So how do we do that? You can just keep going up in partials, but let's just take the last one. We started on D and the highest note was double A, right? So that's a different difference of a fifth. If we wanted to go up, let's say that you started on E, that means your highest note would be trilling up to a double B. Let's say you started on an F, your highest note would be a double C. And for today's lesson, for today's trumpet lesson, I'm just going to demonstrate um, starting on double G, which is the G above IC. Let's give you a refresher course on the names of the notes. Low G, the lowest G we can play on the trumpet is one and three. You don't have two low G's, you have a middle G after that. That's the second line G. You don't have two middle G's, you have the high G, which comes after that. That's the G that sits right on top of the staff. So we got low, middle, high. And when you run out of high, you actually put the word double in front of that. So the next octave higher would be double high G. That's why we call that note double high G. It's not high G. It's double high G. High G sits right on top of the staff. Low G below the staff. Second line G, middle G. On top of the staff is high G. An octave higher is double G. Easy, right? So we are gonna start on double G. Be doing the same format that we did with level four. This is level five, the insane level. And basically we're working the notes above double A. Uh, same format. Here we go. Oh, by the way, I changed into my normal mouthpiece. Uh, this is the mouthpiece I prefer to use uh, when I'm playing in the high C plus range. I prefer this mouthpiece. It seems a little bit easier. I get a little bit more sound out. And by the way, if you want to know what kind of equipment I'm playing on, this is the venerable, huge CG Benj, Claude Gordon Benj trumpet, a point four six eight. It chokes right there to, into 464. And then the mouthpiece I'm playing on is a Bob Reeves custom Neil Sanders. Bob cut off the body of my Neil Sanders 17S, added threads, and then he threaded it on to his 42SV. That's 42 Sam Victor. So I have a very unusual mouthpiece. And I have a nice um, three ounce tungsten weight that's added to it. Kind of helps me focus the sound a little bit. no idea how that turned out but I think I got close so that was the fifth and final level at least for this tutorial the fifth level of trumpet lip flexibilities the insane level you could call it the super duper advanced pro level sometimes I refer to it as the high note artist level the Bud Brisboy level it's just basically the last level that you're going to get to because it doesn't end if you can do that one then you have to start over and go higher 
once you go higher, you got to start over and keep going. So guys, let's do a quick recap of the five levels of trumpet lip flexibility. This is universal. It doesn't change from country to country. It doesn't change from school to college to university. It's universal. The very beginning level that any trumpet player would ever come to would be that first level, level one, that we did out of the Lao Little Amateur Builder book. The second level is the intermediate level, the fourth space E, right in the staff. Lip trills to E, that's level two. The third level for trumpet lip trills and lip serves and flexibility is the lip trilling to high C in the colon lip trill book. Lip trilling to high C. That's going to wrap around the bulk of you people and players who've actually been playing quite a long time or your advanced high school kids or college kids. That, that, that level there, that third level is probably going to be the most common for most players. Lip trilling to high C probably going to give you a challenge. It's certainly going to help you build your flexibility and your range and your endurance. So level three was trilling to high C, lip trilling to high C. Now level four is when we begin to separate and put distance in the in your top tier professional players, the ones that specialize in high piccolo trumpet work. Um, the material from Vivaldi, for, for example, or Bach, or uh, Mozart. Uh, you get the idea. So it's your high pick and low trumpet work, your lead trumpet players that play, that go into the studio and record movie soundtracks, your lead trumpet players that play in rock and disco type bands, your lead trumpet players that play the hardest uh, big band jazz music. So that's level four. And that was when we were trilling to a double A above high C, the very last one in the Charles Colin lip trill book. Finally, you have level five which is the insane <laughs> lip trilling above double A. And I demonstrated one of them today where we start on double G above high C and we use the same format that Dr. Charles Colon had in his volume three and the one that we did in level four. We, we just do a lateral move, the same format. But you start on double G and you do the same format and work your way all the way up to double D and then you end up coming back down. So that was the fifth level. It probably is the final level because that one you can just keep going up and up. There's not really a sixth level. One, two, three, four, five levels of trumpet lip flexibility. I hope you found this informative. If you did, go ahead and leave one of those. Is it a finger up? Well, oh, it's a thumbs up. Okay, leave one of those thumbs up. Uh, maybe you have a question or two about this video. You can leave a comment in the comment section. This is also very valuable for you private trumpet teachers out there because you can use what I did in this trumpet lesson tutorial as a gauge to where certain students should be. In fact, even where yourself should be. You can use that actually to pull people up. If, uh, for example, if you got a senior in high school who is a very good technical player, but they always kind of burn out around A and B flat of other staff, then you should know where to put them in. You really want them to start challenging them on the uh, third level which is a level going to uh, lip trilling to high C in the Charles Cullen book. That's just one example. Obviously, if you're getting a pure beginner or a fifth grader, you're going to have them go right to the Lao Little Amateur Builder book. I'm Kurt Thompson. I hope you enjoyed watching the five levels of trumpet lip flexibility. I found it useful. I know that you can find it practical for your daily practice and to achieving your goals. Make it a double C-licious day, make it a double C-licious day, and I'll catch you in the next one.